Hi, I am Deborah R. Richardson of Deborah R. Richardson LLC, and I work with you to help you clean up your vendor data, clean up your vendor processes so that you pay the right vendor. Now, this week's Vendor Master File Tip of the Week is what you can and cannot tell by the first two digits of the IRS EIN. And what is that? That is the uh, employer identification number. And at one point, it used to be those two digits descriptive. It was based on geographic location prior to 2012. That's why I remember when the 98 uh, when those were the first two digits, that always meant that it was a foreign or non-U.S. vendor. Well, that went away. I didn't know it went away that far back, but you can still see any non-U.S. vendors that requested an EIN prior to 2012. They'll still have that 98 prefix, but after 2012, um, there's really no uh, descriptive based on um, the first two digits, except in a couple of cases, and I'll tell you why. But as an example, if you look at 98, um, 98 just means that the uh, the EIN was assigned by the Philly. Philadelphia IRS location. That's all it really means is location. But again, in two different places or two different instances, it can mean something. Um, so one, if it's uh, issued with the Small Business um, Administration, which I didn't even know they could do that. Maybe it's through that organization. Um, the first two digits start with 31. Um, but the one that I know that makes a difference, and I'll tell you why in a minute, is when it's issued by the internet. So they have the SS4 form that's online. Anyone, well, anyone that is valid, right, that goes through the application and successful can get an employer identification number in, I don't know, less than 15 minutes. I think that's how long they say it takes to fill out that form. And so if it is online, it will have one of those first two digits. Now, for most uh, tax uh, classifications uh, on the W-9, it really doesn't mean a whole lot. However, there are a couple of ones um, that tax classifications will, where it will make a difference. So one of them is a partnership, and I think the other one is trust or estates, but I'll show you where you can find it. But if you look here in publication 1220, um, it says that if the EIN was assigned online, then that makes a difference in the name control and really um, also the IRS 10 match when you're doing the individual lookup for a partnership. What you use to do the lookup and now also for the name control can matter based on whether or not the EIN was assigned online. And so you might want to take a look at that because, it, again, it is, it is in publication 1220, and I have put a link in the description so you can get straight to it. But uh, just click on uh, EIN assignment. I think that's what it's under, and it's, it's right on the table of contents, and you can get to it. So partnerships and then also trust estates have different name controls 10 match rules if uh, the first two digits of the EIN uh, indicate that it was an online assignment. So there you go. Now, if you want some training on EINs and W-9s, um, I will put a link to my W-9 training. It does include the updates from the recently published W-9 that was uh, March 6 of 2024. All right, so if you like more information on how to improve your vendor process, please go to my website at DeborahRRichardson.com for free tools and resources to avoid fraud, regulatory fines, and just overall bad vendor data. I also have under over 163 annual hours of training. I'm always adding. Um, so check out the Vendor Process Training Center if you like to get uh, training for you or your team at training. DeborahRRichardson.com. So good luck and be sure to hit the notification bell to be notified next Tuesday for the next Vendor Master File Tip of the Week.